I've been a data analyst since 2022, and if I wanted to become a data analyst in 2024, here's what I'd do. Hey everyone, my name is Junaid and I'm a graduate data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. And in today's video, I'm going to cover the tried and tested ways of becoming a data analyst, including self-learning, using AI tools, boot camps, degrees, and even apprenticeships. And I'm going to tell you which one I think is the best and quickest. Now, before we start, let's quickly answer the question, should you even become a data analyst in 2024? Is it something you should even consider pursuing anymore? Well, if we take a look at some statistics, Career Foundry estimates that by 2025, the data market will be worth 229.4 billion dollars and with the emergence of AI the data and AI professions showed the highest growth rate at 41 percent per year. Employers also expect data science and data analytics roles to be the most challenging to recruit for because there's such a shortage of skilled data analysts. So I think it's safe to say it's worthwhile to pursue but you do need to be agile and adaptable to be able to constantly stay on top of the changes the industry is currently going through. All right let's dive straight in. Self-learning. AI tools have changed the game when it comes to self-learning. Right in front of our eyes LLMs, large language models, have made it so so easy to learn complex concepts and ideas all by yourself. The tools I use on a daily basis, Excel, Power BI, and even some of the databases now have inbuilt AI functions. You could even go to ChatGPT and ask it to give you an entire learning plan. And here's what I would do if I wanted to self-learn data analysis. Number one, learn the fundamentals. By that, I mean concepts in statistics, mathematics, and programming. Python is a great programming language to start at. Nicely leading into number two, alongside your self-learning, start an online course. Now, this doesn't have to be paid. For example, Harvard's CS50 course Introduction to Programming with Python is free. Yes, the lecture series that Harvard University gives to its computer science students is free on their website. Number three, practice with data sets. Now that you've learned some basics and fundamentals, start practicing different types of data manipulation and transformation techniques on large data sets. Now there are thousands of publicly available data sets that you can practice on. And as an example, if you go onto the IMDB website, they publish subsets of data that you can download into a CSV file and practice on. I have a video about the five Excel functions that I use the most. And in that video, I work through real life practical examples of each function on large sets of data. So click up here to check that video out. Number four, once you're comfortable with manipulating data, now start to integrate and learn about the AI tools that we use in the industry. A lot a lot of integrated AI tools are based on large language models like for example, Microsoft's Copilot. So try and get understanding of LLMs and how they work. If you want more information on the types of AI tools I use, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer every question because I'd need an entire video to try and cover every single AI tool that we started using. Number five, now at this point, I would start to take a look at different specialities within the data analysis sector and try and figure out which one would be best for you. Me personally, I'd target high growth sectors like the FinTech, machine learning and big data markets. Number six, build projects. Now this is arguably the most important step that really demonstrates your analytical ability and creativity. A good project should showcase your entire data ability from data collection, cleaning, transformation and manipulation, all the way to the final output or visualization of your choice. If you want me to go through the project that I use to land my job, let me know down in the comments and I'll make a video on that. I've also included a great link down in the description to a blog that covers some really good examples of potential projects that you can make. Now, your aim with these projects is to create a portfolio that you can put onto your CV or resume and even include on your LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a button that takes people straight to your GitHub portfolio page. Boot camps. Boot camps are a fantastic option. I know data scientists and data analysts who've pivoted into the data sector from other industries just on the merit of a bootcamp they did. Now, while bootcamps do require upfront investment, a good bootcamp can really, really set you up for a role in data. Now, I know a lot of you've asked me about bootcamp and course recommendations, so I'm proud to announce that I've partnered with Springboard to bring you their data analytics bootcamp. Springboard's bootcamp is in partnership with Microsoft, so it's backed by an established company. It gives you one-on-one -on -one coaching with industry experts. It's much, much shorter than a degree, it only lasts six months. And two of the main reasons that I partnered with Springboard in particular is one, they've introduced learning units for AI for data professionals. And two, by the time you graduate or complete your bootcamp, you'll have built a really, really strong projects portfolio from all the work you've done over those six months. If you click the link in the description and sign up using code Junaid, you'll get an exclusive discount of $1,000 off. Now I have to preface this by saying a bootcamp isn't necessary to get a job in data analytics. I didn't do one, but 
Then again, I did have a degree that helped me a bit. Also, Spring Balls Bootcamp isn't a passive undertaking. It's quite intensive and it will require you to dedicate a lot of your time to make the most of it. It's not a magic solution. You will have to invest a lot of your time and effort to complete it. Now, you know what I always say is that I strongly recommend you do your own research and before you dive in and sign up to any bootcamp, build a strong foundation in mathematics, statistics, and the data life cycle. Another benefit of online bootcamps, which has recently arisen, is that since quite a few data jobs are remote, by doing an online bootcamp, you can demonstrate to employers that you're capable of working with a team online and that you'll be able to integrate into their remote or hybrid working system relatively seamlessly. If that sounds like something you'd be interested, click the link in the description and sign up. Or if you want more information, click the link, choose your preferred course, go to the top, top right, and click the button request syllabus and the team at Springboard will email you an overview of what you can expect to learn in the bootcamp. Degrees. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of degrees for most data analyst roles. Truth is, you don't even need a degree to become a data analyst in most industries. Now, I know you might be saying, but Junaid, you have a degree. That's true, I do have a degree, but my role consists of a lot of finance and for that I kind of needed the financial knowledge that I learnt in my degree. But in many industries, I don't think you need to go out of your way to earn a degree. It doesn't make sense to go into tens and tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt when I know there are analysts who have been able to get into the industry because they did a boot camp, online courses or even an internship work experience where they were able to demonstrate their data ability to land that data analyst role. If you're in the position where you definitely definitely want a degree, maybe you want it as a fallback option or it's a qualification that you definitely want to pursue, I'd recommend looking into degree apprenticeships, which is what we'll cover next. Apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are another fantastic option for getting your foot in the door to becoming a data analyst. Now there are two types of apprenticeships, at least here in the UK. Number one is a regular apprenticeship where you'll be working towards a qualification. It's usually an industry recognized qualification. Number two, degree apprenticeships, at the end of which you will have earned a full degree. Now, degree apprenticeships do take in general a little bit longer than regular apprenticeships, but you could argue that they also give you a higher qualification upon completion. Now, the benefit of apprenticeships is that you'll be working at a company while also learning all the aspects of data and data analysis, which ends up being far more practical than anything you'd learn at university. Also, after completing the apprenticeship, as long as you've demonstrated your capabilities, it's likely you'll get a full-time job offer from the company you've been learning and working at. Now, I've spoken to an apprentice and if you're watching this, he'll remember this conversation. He did say that again, apprenticeships aren't an easy route or passive route to take. The road to landing that full-time offer can also be quite intensive and you do have to be constantly proving yourself to your employer during the length of your contract. So which one of these options are the best? Should you learn data analysis by yourself? Should you do a degree? Should you do an apprenticeship? Or should you do a bootcamp? And honestly, it depends. If I wanted a data analyst job as quick as possible, I'd do an online bootcamp. It would last six months. But if I had time to spare and I really wanted to consolidate my learning and fundamentals, then I'd do a degree apprenticeship. But you have to bear in mind, it's difficult to get an apprenticeship without at least some experience or previous skills. And you have to bear in mind, you will be an apprentice for quite some time, usually three years. Now, if you are a little bit older, don't be put off from applying to apprenticeships or boot camps. They're not just for younger people. Apprenticeship programs are open to people of all ages. The apprentice I spoke to, he said there were software engineers who were trying to gain a qualification in their late 40s. So my point being, don't be put off by thinking those are just options for the young crowd. That's not the case. Now, remember the statistics we covered at the beginning of the video where we said that demand for data analyst is very high. And while that's true, that demand doesn't mean you can just easily get in without a set of solid specialized skills. But if you can get a job, I can confidently say that it's a great industry to work in. It's definitely worth the effort and there's constantly new things to learn and I'm exposed to and dealing with the cutting edge of new technology and tools. If you have any questions, do let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer all of them. If you're thinking of becoming a data analyst but don't know what the day to day is like, check out some of my day in the life vlogs where I try and explain what I do on a daily basis. That's all for this video. I hope it was useful and informative. If it was, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.